بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Besides ejaculated fluid, every liquid from the eliminatory outlets is filthy. Every liquid from the eliminatory outlets is filthy. That's a rule. Recently, someone asked me, when the woman is about to have a baby and then her water bursts, when the woman is about to have a baby and then her water bursts, What's that stuff that comes out? So is that a fluid that comes from her vagina? The rule is any liquid that comes from the eliminatory outlets, yani the front and back private parts, is filthy, except the mani, as you know. Whether it's ordinary or unordinary. So ordinary is like the urine, the feces, the pre-ejaculated fluid or unordinary the unordinary is like blood or pus especially concerning a man with the blood the woman has vaginal bleeding but the man doesn't have any bleeding from there so that's unordinary it's still going to be najasa even if it's unordinary whether that's from an edible animal or not it's going to be najasa from the animals too. Al-Bukhari and Muslim narrated the hadith about the Bedouin who came in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and urinated on the ground. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded that a full bucket of water be poured over it. And so it was poured. And now what we said, therein, yani in this hadith, is confirmation, yani evidence, for the filthiness of human urine. And this is a matter agreed upon, that the human urine is filthy. The male pre-ejaculation and female discharge, the mevi, so in Arabic it's the same thing, mevi, which is the fluid of arousal, but in English seems they use different words for that. So the male pre-ejaculation and the female discharge, and to be honest with you, this word discharge, I'm not really convinced about it because I think they use that for several things, not one thing only. So we're talking in particular about right now about the fluid from arousal. That's called al-mavi. It is thick, sticky, and exits upon arousal. The hadith of Ali was already mentioned in the chapter of Wudu. If you remember that hadith, that Ali said, I was a man who experienced excessive pre-ejaculation, and I was shy to ask the Messenger of Allah because of my relation to his daughter. Therefore, I ordered Muqdad ibn al-Aswad al-Kindi, to go and ask for me. He said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, He washes his penis and makes wudu. That's the hadith. Wadi is thick and murky, exiting after urination or straining. Yani wadi also comes from the private part. Uh, it's when we say it's thick and murky, it has semblance to semen, to ejaculated fluid. It's more similar to the ejaculated fluid than it is to the pre ejaculated fluid. But it's neither of those two. It exits after urination or straining. What's its judgment? Filthiness. What's the evidence? Qiyas. Comparison. Its filthiness is by comparing it to the pre-ejaculation. And it is a matter of consensus. So we just talked about what's wet and comes from the private parts, front and back private parts. What about the solids? Solids have two cases. 
If what exits is something unchanged by the innards, like a stone or a worm or a grain like corn that exits as it went in, so it came out the way it went in. So for example, it would grow if you planted it, it didn't change. Then what's its judgment? It is pure by itself, but it's contaminated for being inside the body in the midst of whatever fluids are in there. So when it comes out, you'd have to rinse it off. Imagine if a person swallowed a penny and then it came out exactly like it went in. So you'd have to rinse it off and it's still paw here. If what exits is solid feces, it is filth. The evidence for the filthiness of feces, besides the consensus, is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Ammar, إِنَّمَا تَغْثِلُ ثَوْبَكَ مِنَ الْبَوْلِ وَالْغَائِطِ وَالْمَذْيِ وَالْقَيِّ Wash your clothing from urine, feces, pre-ejaculation, and vomit. The source for deeming the dead filthy, like we already said, Everything dead is filthy except the human, the fish, the locust, and the edible animal that had an Islamic kill. The source, meaning the evidence, for deeming the dead filthy is the verse of the Quran, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةِ Forbidden for you to eat is the dead. So that's proof that it's najis. The prohibition of eating something that neither has honor nor is apparently harmful, apparently harmful. Why are we saying apparently harmful? Because we want to exclude something like haram meat. Haram meat is harmful in a religious way and if you want a spiritual way, but not in an apparent way. So the prohibition of eating something that neither has honor, nor is apparently harmful, nor is repulsive, why would such a prohibition be? It is for its filthiness, as we already said. <inaudible> Except what you slaughtered, like we already said, alhamdulillah. The fetus found dead in its slaughtered mother. What's the judgment of that one? You slaughtered the cow and there was a fetus in there. Now we know for sure the cow is still paw here because it's slaughtered. What about the baby that was in the belly? The fetus found dead in its slaughtered mother is also exempted and therefore pure and lawful to eat. Saying that it's exempted, that's a saying. That's a saying that it's exempted. It is said that it is not exempted, rather that it is slaughtered. Yani, some said, no, we're not going to say it that way. We don't accept that choice of words. We're not going to say it's exempted. We're going to say it's slaughtered. It's slaughtered by its mother's slaughter. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, the katul janin, the katu ummi, the slaughter, very literally, the slaughter of the fetus is the slaughter of its mother. The slaughter that renders the mother edible is the slaughter that renders the fetus edible. It means, so they're saying, so by virtue of what the prophet said, we're going to not call it exempted. We're going to call it slaughtered. The same is said for the hunted game and the runaway camel killed by the arrow. Meaning, are they exemptions? No, these are actually valid modes of slaughter and they are not exemptions so when you say exemption means outside of the rule the exception to being filthy while dead is the human fish and locust by consensus 
more proof for the purity of the dead human besides the evidence that we gave before including his bones and his hair it doesn't become filthy and don't forget when you prepare the dead muslim any hairs or skin that separates needs to go into the shroud not in the trash not down the drain it's not najis its evidence is the hadith from abu hurairah subhanallah inna al la yanjus the glorification of God from imperfection. Yani, glorified is God from imperfection. Surely, Yani, glorified is God. Surely, the believer does not become filthy. This statement of the Prophet والسلام, is an expression of astonishment. When he says, Subhanallah, that's a ta'ajjub. That's astonishment. Glorified is God. Surely the believer does not become filthy. The filthiness of the idolaters. So what about the kuffar? This is the believer in the hadith. So what about the kuffar? Are they filthy when they die? And there's this ayah. What's the filthiness of the idolaters when Allah says, Inna najas. Merely the idolaters, the idol worshippers, the pagans are filth. What is that, Najas? Real Najas? No. It's the filthiness of their convictions. It's not the filthiness of their bodies. It may mean that they should be avoided like filth. So, in other words, the dead Kafir, he's also Tahir, not Najas. So the dead human is not najis, believer or kafir. Concerning fish, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, huwa tahuru ma'uh al-hillu maytatuh. The ocean, purifying is its water, lawful is its dead. So if it's dead or lawful, that means we didn't slaughter that dead sea animal but it's lawful to eat it, that means then it's pure. And for locusts, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Uhillat lana maytatan as wal jarad. Two dead animals are lawful for us, the fish and the locust. A piece severed from the living, a piece that's severed from the living. So let's say you had a cow or a goat. So what if someone just cut his ear off while it's alive or cut his tail off, for example? Or that also includes the hair that falls off of the animal. If you have a cat and the hair comes off of the animal, what's the judgment of that? A piece severed from the living has the judgment of that creature had it been dead. So what's the judgment of a cat had it been dead? Najas? Yes. So then what's the judgment of its hair when it comes off? Najas. A piece severed from the living has the judgment of that creature had it been dead. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا قُطِعَ مِنْ حَيٍّ فَهُوَ كَمَيْتَتِهِ Whatever is cut from the living is like it, had it been dead. Yani is like what it came from, had it been dead. Had what it came from been dead. Excluding hair, wool, feathers, saliva, and semen of an edible animal. Uh, the saliva. Okay, so let's let's unpack that. Excluding the hair, wool, feathers, saliva, and semen of an edible animal. So first of all, when it comes to the edible animal, then for sure this is the case. The cat is not edible. That's the example I gave you. The hair came off that cat. So it's going to be not just. And then someone might say, hey, you just said excluding the hair of an edible animal, not any animal. Excluding the hair, wool, feathers, saliva, and semen of an edible animal. So, for example, goose feathers. 
what's the judgment of a triple fat goose? So what's the rule? Got to resort back to the rule. The rule is whatever comes off of a creature has the judgment of that creature had it been dead. Uh, except if it's an edible animal, if it's an edible animal and that's hair, and except if that's hair or wool or feathers, let's take those three first. The hair, the wool, or the feathers, hair and wool is pretty much the same thing here. The hair, the wool, and the feathers of an edible animal, if it comes off of that animal while it's alive, then it stays pure. So if those feathers in your triple fat goose came off of a living goose, and I don't think he's going to be cooperating for that, then those feathers are pure. But if they came from a dead goose, which is more likely, then those feathers are nudges unless that goose were slaughtered because a goose is an edible animal. Then if the goose were slaughtered and you took the feathers from it, then they're still pure. So maybe I said a lot there. Let me repeat. A piece severed from the living has the judgment of that creature had it been dead. Because the Prophet wasallam said, Whatever is cut from the living is like it, had it been dead. So like what? I gave you an example. Like if you just cut the ear off of a goat or its tail or off of a cow, for example. And it's still alive, that creature, but you just cut off its piece. Or you sliced a chunk out of the rump of a cow. Sheikh Muhammad Suleiman told us that sailors, probably in the past in particular, since they didn't have refrigeration, sailors would bring live animals on board, keep them alive because the meat's going to rot if you don't keep it alive. They would keep the animal alive and cut pieces off of the animal while it's alive. That's haram. And then that meat's going to be najis. So whatever is cut from the living is like it had it been dead, excluding hair and wool, which are like the same thing, and feathers, so that's like hair for birds, excluding hair, wool, and feathers of an edible animal. So if you get confused here, just think of the sheep. Don't they take a sheep while it's alive and they shave the wool off of it? And we benefit from that wool in many things, in many ways. So remember the, the sheep. And then if you remember the sheep, you should remember the rule. So that sheep is alive. It's an edible animal. So when the hair comes off of it, while it's alive, it stays pure. So that's the rule. The hair and wool and feathers that come off of an edible animal while it's alive, they stay pure. So pigeons, for example, they're edible. So if you saw a pigeon in the street and then he flew away and a feather came down, that feather is still pure. Now, as for the semen, we talked about that in the first lesson. And now as for the saliva, I need to review. Question. You said, so pillows and blankets with feathers are okay? Goes back to the rule I just said. For me, I would probably not prefer to use those because I think that those feathers, those feathers were taken from the bird after it died. And for me, it's far-fetched that they slaughtered the goose, especially that we don't eat goose meat usually so that someone would even care to slaughter the goose properly I'm just talking me i'm not talking about the rule you know the rule if it came from the goose while it's alive it's still pure if it came from the goose while it's dead then since the goose is an edible animal had that goose been slaughtered then it's still pure also and if the goose died without a slaughter, and then they took the feathers, then those feathers are nudges.
When there is a facility, the filth is excused. Uh, so now here we want to talk about excused filth. So I'll leave it to you, brothers and sisters. You tell me, should we continue or should we stop here and, and start excused filth from the top of the hour for next week? What say you? Someone says next week. Okay. Someone else says next week. Okay, that's good enough for me. Let's stop here then. Do you have any question that I can answer for you, inshallah?